and Andy, you can take it away. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen, Jenna? Yes, I can. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So I have been uh, silently watching the whole resource fair today and it has gone wonderfully. I hope that everyone has um, received some resources that could help them. Um, thank you for attending my portion. My name is Andrea Valencia and I'm the research and instruction librarian here at Riverside County Law Library. Um, my portion of the resource fair will provide hopefully a helpful brief tutorial on a few of our databases that are available to you and as well as some other resource recommendations. So to begin, we'll be discussing some of our online databases available to you on our website. So our website is listed right here. It's um, www.rclawlibrary.org and you'll find um, these databases by um, finding them under the research tab. You'll find that some of the databases allow you to create your own profile while others you may call our main line to receive direct login information. And so we're going to be taking a look at our first database. So the first database that we'll be providing an overview and tutorial on is Westlaw. So this database is one of my favorites when, I, when I'm conducting um, research uh, because it's uh, wonderful to search cases and sample motions on. You can see that there is a step-by-step -step instruction guide to make a profile that provides you with limited access right here. When you log into Westlaw, you'll see that the quick links take you to different content within the website. So you see here, there's uh, cases, regulations, practical law, secondary resources. And there's also a COVID-19 legal materials and news, which is especially useful. If you wanted to perform a general search, it would be up here at the top where it says enter terms, citations, databases, etc. And this is where you could type in just a general search of what you're looking for. Something to also pay attention to is the uh, limiters here, right here. So right now it says all federal, that would be conducting a general search with no limiters, but you can limit it by jurisdictions. So by state, you could do by court, by circuit. So if you needed to limit it to specifically California, you would just click California and then save those limitation searches. And then it will return you to the previous screen and you'll press search again. So we're going to walk through a example, an example together. So the first uh, example will be we'll search for a sample motion, motion to compel. As you can see, I typed that here in the search bar, motion to compel. And I'm not going to place any limiters on it. I'm just going to leave it as all federal to see what we can yield in our search results. So these are the search results yielded for motion to compel. Something to pay attention to is the left-hand menu right here. Here we can filter results to a general overview, uh, cases, secondary sources, and most importantly, forms, since that's what we're looking for. As you can see, I selected forms and it yielded 377 results. The next step, um, is finding a form that best suits you and your case. So we're just gonna generally look um, for the purpose of this example, we're just gonna look at the first result yielded, which is motion for protective order failure by the opposing party to file a timely motion to compel. So by clicking on the first result, we can look into more detail at motion for protective order um, if you decide that the sample motion is relevant to your search, you can download it right here. So right here in this little box. So what you would do is you would click on this arrow and it's gonna give you a couple different options. It's gonna ask you if you want it to be emailed or in this case, we want it to be downloaded. 
So you're going to change the action to download and then a pop up box will pop up. I recommend changing the format to PDF before um, pressing download just because it's a format that is easily editable. Edit editable. <laughs> uh, after you uh, press download, it will ask you one more time to press another download button before officially download. So that's something to note. You just have to press it a couple times. And then as you can see, the file downloaded onto our computer. From here, you can click on the file to open the file. And then once we open the file, we can see the contents right here. From here, you can save the file to a particular folder on your computer. You can print it or you can email it to a colleague. So that was Westlaw. And then next, we're going to do a similar search on the LexisNexis database. So similar to Westlaw, you're going to set up a, an account on your own. And currently we have access until January 31st. However, we expect access to continue to renew uh, as our service model is continuously impacted by COVID. So we've had it renewed every month. Um, so we expect it to continue to follow that pattern. So once you log into Lexis, the homepage is formatted as so. It has links down here below where you can explore the content that takes you to curated content such as cases, statues, um, news, sample forms, as well as COVID-19 resources. And up here is the search bar. So you will just type in your general search right here. And then you can also limit the limit the categories or jurisdictions here. So this is what that looks like. The categories, we can limit it to cases, we can limit it to sample forms, and then we can also limit it by jurisdiction, by court, circuit, or state. So this is relevant if you want to limit it to just California again. So we're going to do a similar search. We're going to do motion to compel again, just to kind of compare the different results yielded from the two different databases. So we're going to input motion to compel with no limiters. So now that we have yielded our results, we're going to change the category of results to forms. So right now it's on cases and we're going to change it to forms right here. So we're going to click on the first result just for the purpose of this example. It's titled motion of motion, motion, notice of motion and motion to compel compliance with discovery request. So clicking on the result takes you to the form as you can see here. So again, you're gonna decide if this form is relevant to your search and you will download it right here. And you can also print it directly from the, the website as well right here. So we're gonna download it. So when the download pop-up box uh, pops up, I again recommend that you download it in PDF format. And then you're just gonna leave everything the same if that's all right with you and then press download again. And then you'll see that it downloaded right here. By opening the file, we can see the contents. And from here, you can again, save the file to a specific folder in your computer. You can print it or email it to a colleague. All right, so then our next database is gonna be FastCase. So unlike the two previous databases where you had to create your own um, profile, with FastCase and the following databases, you can receive the login information directly from RCLL staff. So I put it here for your convenience. Um, FastCase in general is an excellent source of primary law documents. And then um, again, you can receive this login information either right now, because I wrote it down, or you can uh, in the future always call or email RCLL staff. So once you log into FastCase, you have two different modes of search, uh, searching processes. You can either search within the bar in the general search, or you can uh, browse the libraries. 
And then just like uh, Westlaw and Lexis, you can place jurisdictional limiters based on the state or circuit level, as you can see here. So we have states, we have the federal level, and then we also have primary and secondary, secondary sources. When we click on browse libraries, it takes us to this page where we can see an outline of all the material that's on the website. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to explore the statutes and legislative code section of the primary material available to us. So that's going to be right here under legislative materials. So by clicking on United States Code, we can see the table of contents on the left. And it, when, when, by clicking on the different section, it, sections, it opens up the section on the right window. So for example, I just randomly clicked on section 28, role of representatives elect, and it showed the contents right over here on the right with the, uh, the code. And then you can scroll and click through all of these different uh, chapters and sections. The next database that we're going to take a quick look at is Hein Online. Uh, there are several, uh, let's see, Hein Online is a great resource for secondary resources. So Fast Case was great for primary, Hein Online is great for secondary. So secondary includes articles, reviews, things like that, that are related to different law topics. Um, like FastCase, our CLO staff can provide the login information directly to you over the phone or by email. And then for your convenience, I have also listed it right here on the slide. So there are several databases within Hein Online, but the one that I want to highlight in this presentation is the COVID-19 pandemics past and present database. And it's located right here on the front page. So this is actually a really remarkable database. Um, it discusses the different area of impact of COVID-19. It has scholarly articles, past pandemic information, and additional resources compiled by librarians um, within the profession. Um, the database contains more than 530 titles and ne nearly 50,000 pages of information. In addition to government documents, users can access external resources compiled by Hein Online and other librarians. One that I highly recommend is the EBSCO COVID-19 information portal. And then once you click on it, it looks like this. And from here, you can search the different trending topics with COVID-19, as well as search the latest official information. So now that we've gone through all of our databases, or most of them, the, my favorites, um, we're going to um, just go over some of the additional resources um, that we provide. So the first that I'm going to be sharing with you is the Lexis Digital Library, which is a portion of our regular collection, of our, our regular print collection that unfortunately isn't available because we're not open right now. Um, it's uh, designed for digital access at home. Then you can request access through our Google Doc, which is listed on our website. And so we're going to take a quick look at the form together just to see what information it's going to ask you to input. So right here is the uh, Lexus, Lexus Digital Library request form. So you're going to put in your name, your email address, your zip code, and a quick hi, or if you wanted to say hi to us. Uh, once you receive the email, oh, wait. Once you receive the email letting you know that you received access, your email will be your username and your last name in all lowercase will typically be your password. And then once you receive access to the Lexis Digital Library, you'll be able to browse the digital library for different materials. So right here is what it's going to look like. You'll see our name right at the top with our logo, and then you can click browse library. It's going to have some frequently used titles as well as the ability to search for any 
um, books or titles that you may be interested in. So by clicking on the first example that we can find, which is the California Forms of Pleading and Practice, we can see a description of the item and look into more detail of the table of contents, description, or details of the book. If we wanted to look inside the book, we're going to press the big red read button. And the book will open up just like it would display on your iPad or your Kindle at home. You will be able to scroll through the pages using this little toggle right here. You'll be able to search within the book for keywords. So if you have ever, for example, um, had a PDF open on your computer and you used Control F to find a word that you needed for research, you could do the same thing within um, the Lexis Digital Library. You're going to use the little search button to search for those words or phrases. You can click on links within the within the book and you can even print from the book as well. So the next resource is going to be our um, online reference service request form. So if you would like to reach out to me or any of the staff throughout the RCLL system with a reference question, you can submit a reference question request through our Google Doc. And um, that's also found on our website. So we can take a quick look at it together. So this is what it looks like. It's going to ask you your name, your phone number, your city, what um, library you're closest to so we can connect you with the correct reference librarian or reference staff, um, the purpose of your request, any specific reference to documents, if this is um, regarding a current or future case, and then more. So we can take a quick look here. So your legal topic, and then it keeps going, just so that we can gain as, as best understanding of your uh, legal question as possible. And then the last um, resource I wanted to just quickly share with you is the um, Ask a Law Librarian website. So there is a live chat with um, Ask a Law Librarian, where you can connect with law librarians from across the state. The chat is available weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays. And then if the live chat is unavailable for whatever reason, you can submit a question for email response on the website as well. All right, thank you for attending my portion of the resource fair. I hope that I was able to help you gain an introduction to some of our resources or highlighted something new that you could reuse in your research process. If you have any questions, feel free to email me directly or email the lawlibrary.riverside email for uh, any specific reference questions you may have.